Mike, uh, we're here at Signature Pub's newest venture, Cold Town House, right here in the grass market. Got the castle right up behind us. Uh, first of all, welcome to Edinburgh. It must feel uh, somewhat more like being at home at the moment with the, the South African contingent as the club at the moment. How have they helped you settle in? Yeah, look, it's it's really good to be here. And to be honest with you, it, exactly as you said, it, it's, uh, it, it's pretty much like being at home with the minor South Africans here. They've all really welcomed me well. Um, I was in chats with them prior to coming over and they really sort of helped my transition over pretty, uh, they made it pretty easy and um, yeah, you know, they've they helped me settle in properly, showed me around, showed me the coffee shops, a couple of bars here and there, so yeah, it's been really good. Did you have a, a relationship with uh, with Duhan or, or Yako before you came over here or did you know about the, the legend that is WP now? WP is a little bit older than me, so I didn't ever get to play against him. Watched him a good couple of times. Uh, Duan was a bit younger than me, so yeah, I didn't really catch him much. Pierre played a, played against a couple of times, and Yako actually got the privilege of playing with uh, at the Lions in, in Johannesburg for a brief stint uh, um, for about four or five weeks. Um, so I knew him quite well, and we chatted quite a bit. Regardless of that, it's, it's been quite easy to get to know them all. Uh, pretty well. I mean, we've got a lot in common. Um, you know, a lot to chat about. So it's been, it's been a pleasure so far. I did. I forgot about Pierre there as well. I mean, surely you must know about him from just following him on Instagram alone. Yes, exactly. He's quite a quite a big Instagram presence. Um, so yeah, I mean, he uh, he actually followed me the minute he found out that that uh, that I was coming over, and we started chatting through that. Um, and yeah, you know, through what he's done over the last season. I mean, you can't really. Uh, you can't miss him anywhere on, on, on social media. So, yeah, I've followed him quite a bit, and you know, I'm, I'm really, I've been really impressed with how he's gone on. I think within being a month of here, Pierre already was lifting up his wife in front of Edinburgh Castle. Can supporters expect the same from you? <laughs> Look, I, I haven't got a missus, so I have to find one this side and do that. <laughs> get, what were your preconceptions of, of Scotland and Edinburgh before you came here? I mean, did you have an idea of what, what the move was going to be like? Look, I, I played here once or twice, and. Um, I had a couple of mates over at Glasgow, so look, I knew it was going to be cold. Um, it's been alright, to be honest with you. Um, I think that was one of the biggest worries, was the, was the weather change, but I know, it's, I know the worst is, is uh, yet to come, so yeah, but regardless of that, I've really been excited. I, I, I really get on well with uh, Scottish folk, um, so I was just all really excited, and I know how hard the guys work. Um, so yeah, I was just really excited to get over and, and start things, you know. As you said there, how hard the guys work as well. Have you, have you seen the difference in terms of the, the working environment coming from Southern Kings to Edinburgh? Is it a bit more intense? I've just been really impressed with the, the level of professionalism um, in terms of, you know, support staff and how you sort of, you get your individual help from, from someone um, in the background. Um, I think that's the biggest difference, you know, and they, they really do push you in terms of GPS systems and just trying to push you to lift heavier weights. Um, I think South Africa has a little bit of a way to go, not far off, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed it so far. So, yeah. Mike, can you maybe talk a bit about your, your rugby career so far and, and how you came about signing for Edinburgh? Obviously, you, you were based in South Africa your, your whole career. What's your journey been like? Yeah, so. I actually left school not really uh, focusing on rugby too much and I went to varsity and, and sort of made my breakthrough there in, in, in Cape Town. Um, so yeah, I, I went to Western I was lucky enough to play for Western Province and then a couple of years with the Stormers. Um, but in that uh, there were two really good, two or three really good hookers above me and I didn't really get uh, much game time. And then, um, yeah, I got a bit of a loan at, at the Southern or at the Kings. At that time, it was still EP, um, and then got recalled by Western Province for for Curry Cup. Um, and then I realised, you know, I actually, you know, I was at school in Port Elizabeth, and I really enjoyed my little stint there. And when the offer came over to to go over to uh, to Southern Kings, I, I jumped at it, um, knowing that I'd get a little bit more game time and, you know, hopefully uh, develop my game a bit more. Um, and it really was, you know, for the best. It helped me grow in confidence and uh, develop my game. Uh, we had a year in Super Rugby, um, which we did really well. Learned a lot from it. Um, and then the Kings got kicked out of the Super Rugby and lucky enough came over to Pro 14, which has been sort of a revelation for me and, and 
the whole union and everything in South Africa. Um, and it really just has been so good. Uh, I think the level of the Pro 14 and in every sort of aspect is just a lot higher than any anyone really understands. Um, you know, in terms of skill, uh, fitness, sort of all-round game, it just it really tests you. So, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to get that gap, and I've, you know, when the when the call come out, or came over to to join Edinburgh, I jumped at it as well. So, yeah. Away from rugby, you you grew up in Cape Town. What what was that like uh, growing up there? Was was it always rugby mad? Was it always that uh, was that main focus? Look, Cape Town's a different. They, they say it's a different country almost altogether. But uh, yeah, it, it's re it really is an awesome city, um, and there's lots to do other than rugby. So it was nice. So I think a lot of the boys there, we sort of made an effort to to get our minds off rugby, uh, play a lot of golf, uh, do a lot of things sort of off the field. Um, so yeah, it was a good lifestyle. Who do you think was your biggest influence growing up? Who was your biggest influence in your kind of rugby career? I think, yeah, through the years it's changed quite a bit, you know. Um, I'd say my dad was pretty pretty high up on that list. Um, but, you know, through friends and family, everyone sort of played their part. Um, but one of, there's one or two people that stick out in terms of coaches and, uh, you know, sort of support staff that have helped me through the years. John Dobson from Western Province really pushed my, my rugby career. And then Dion Davids as well, you know, he gave me the, the opportunity to start and captain the Southern Kings, which got me a bit of exposure um, and essentially led me to this to this position now. So, yeah, I mean, I, there's probably a couple of names I've left out, but those are the ones that probably, you know, stick out. You obviously, you're, you're here in Edinburgh now. I mean, it's a historic city. What have you kind of liked about the place so far? Have you done, have you done any of the tourism stuff yet? I haven't actually done enough yet, um, but I just can't believe how beautiful this place is. It really is. It's, it's you know, I, I walked down Princess Street, I think it was, the other day, and I was just standing there in awe of how sort of the, the infrastructure and, you know, the architecture that's gone into building the city. It, it's honestly, it's awesome and it's so beautiful. Um, I know my, my mom's been asking for photos just about every second so I've, I've yeah I've really enjoyed just coming in and you know just the, the castle everything everything about it is just seriously awesome so. and, you, and you mentioned you can't wait or your mom and dad can't wait to come over and visit as well yeah they're, they're looking at gaps they're just waiting for the fixtures to come out and uh, they'll probably plan their first trip over so yeah uh, they're looking forward to it so yeah. just to finish on Mike what do you really hope to achieve while you're here what's your kind of your one goal your one aspiration that you want to do while you're here I think, you know, at first I just want to sort of um, prove myself, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of, you know, the team and whatnot and, and just towards the, the fans in Edinburgh. But personally, um, you know, just establish myself this side uh, and make an aim for myself on the rugby field. I think that's pretty much what everyone wants to do at the end of the day. Um, you know, I'm 26 now. Um, and I've got a couple, a bit of a couple of years of experience behind my name, and I think it's time to sort of put it all together and start cracking on a bit. And I look forward to what Edinburgh can do for me and what I can do for Edinburgh. So yeah.